dialysis. In medicine, dialysis is the process of removing excess water, solutes and toxins from the blood when the kidneys can no longer perform these functions naturally. This is also referred to as renal replacement therapy or RRT for short. Types. There are two main types of dialysis, peritoneal dialysis and hemodialysis. Peritoneal dialysis. It is a type of dialysis which uses the peritoneum in the abdomen as the membrane through which fluid and dissolved substances are exchanged with the blood. The potential risks and complications of peritoneal dialysis. As peritoneal dialysis requires an abdominal catheter to pump dialysis solution in abdomen, it may lead to peritonitis, abdominal pain, weakening of abdominal muscles over time, or hernia. Hemodialysis. It removes wastes and water by circulating blood outside the body through an external filter or an artificial kidney called a dialyzer that contains a semi-permeable membrane. The blood flows in one direction and the dialysate flows in the opposite direction. There are two main types of hemodialysis. Intermittent hemodialysis or IHD for short and continuous hemodialysis or continuous renal replacement therapy CRRT for short. Intermittent hemodialysis. It is a renal replacement therapy that is defined by short and efficient hemodialysis sessions with the goal of removing endogenous or exogenous toxins from the bloodstream. Traditionally, intermittent hemodialysis sessions are one to six hours in length, but can be longer depending on the stability of the patient and the desired outcomes. Continuous hemodialysis or continuous renal replacement therapy. It is a continuous process and once treatment begins, therapy continues until renal function returns or the patient is transitioned to intermittent hemodialysis. CRRT is more time and financially demanding as compared to IHD. Potential risks and complications of hemodialysis include hematoma formation at the catheter site, infection at the catheter site, hypotension, and thrombus formation. Principle of hemodialysis. Hemodialysis aims to remove accumulated metabolic waste products, correct blood electrolyte composition by means of an exchange between the patient's blood and dialysate fluid across a semi-permeable membrane in a countercurrent mechanism and to remove excess fluids by means of ultrafiltration. Countercurrent blood dialysate. This means that the dialysate is flowing in the opposite direction to the blood flow in the extracorporeal circuit. Countercurrent flow maintains the concentration gradient across the membrane at a maximum and increases the efficiency of the dialysis. This approach is used for intermittent hemodialysis to provide maximum effusive gradient and maximum removal of uremic toxins as fresh dialysate fluid is continuously exposed to solutes, uremics and toxins laden in blood. The countercurrent blood dialysate flow we find that in the first part of the blood, entry of the dialysate fluid is already concentrated, but it is less concentrated than the blood. Thus, there is still a concentration gradient. While in the middle, the concentration gradient remains the same. The blood is depleted of solutes at the same rate as the dialysate is enriched by it. At the end of the blood circulation from the dialyzer, the concentration gradient remains the same. The solutes depleted blood is exposed to a completely clean dialysate as the concentration gradient remains unchanged. So we have a blood pathway and a dialysate pathway and a diffusion process all through the dialyzer. The second basic principle of solute removal is called convection. Convection is the simultaneous transport of solvent and solutes from the blood compartment to the dialysate compartment 
across the dialysis membrane, sometimes from the dialysate compartment to the blood compartment, and is called backfiltration. Solute transfer across a semi-permeable membrane by pressure makes solute drag and the convective transport across the membrane has many determinants like water flux across the membrane. Increased water flux leads to increased dragging of solutes and increased convection. Pore size of the membrane. The bigger the pore size, the more the molecular removal. Molecular size. Larger molecular movement is less. So in conventional therapy, we find that very big molecules like albumin are not removed while middle-sized molecules can be easily transported. So, movement of fluids carrying dissolved solutes depends upon ultrafiltration rates and transmembrane pressure and more efficient middle-sized molecular removal. Indications of IHD. Oliguria or anuria of acute kidney injury, azotemia due to chronic kidney disease or acute kidney injury, intoxication, fluid overload, hyperkalemia and acidosis which are refractory to conventional medicinal therapy, patient stabilization before renal transplantation, or increasing life expectancy and quality of life in chronic kidney disease. Dialysis Unit, College of Veterinary Science, Gurdwasu. Intermittent hemodialysis. It is carried out in two phases, the patient or animal phase and the dialysis delivery machine phase. Patient or animal phase. Before initiating dialysis, a potential candidate is screened properly by carrying out pre-dialysis checkups like arterial blood gas analysis, complete blood count, liver function tests, kidney function tests, urinalysis, thoracic radiographs, abdominal radiographs to measure kidney size, abdominal ultrasound, blood pressure monitoring, ECG, and echocardiography. The animal is positioned in lateral recumbency and the vascular access site is prepared surgically. In dogs and cats, the jugular vein is the standard vascular access for the central venous catheterization to carry out dialysis. Catheterization. To carry out efficient dialysis, a dedicated dialysis catheter, double lumen catheter, also known as DLC, is used, which allows simultaneous removal and return of blood. The size and type of catheter depends on patient size and intended placement time. Temporary catheters may function for up to four weeks, whereas permanent catheters can function for an extended period of time. Materials required for catheterization. Sterile swabs, two 20 ml syringes, one loaded with normal saline solution and one empty. Diluted heparin solution, suture material, and hemostats in case of emergency a double lumen catheter kit, typically includes a double lumen catheter, a guide wire, a 16 or 18 gauge needle, vessel dilator, BP blade, and suture material. Always check the catheter and guide wire for any defect before performing catheterization. Before initiating catheterization, spray local anesthetic to minimize pain. 
Ideally, the tip of the catheter should be placed at the junction of the cranial vena cava and right atrium. Accordingly, measure the length of insertion site up to the second intercostal space. Raise the jugular vein and insert the needle. Insert the guide wire and simultaneously observe the ECG for cardiac arrhythmia. Gently push the guide wire till arrhythmia is observed and quickly pull back the guide wire a few centimeters. Remove the needle and insert the vessel dilator through the guide wire and dilate the venous entry site by using a BP blade. Remove the dilator while keeping the guide wire in place and insert the catheter over the guide wire. Remove the guide wire and flush both catheter ports with diluted heparin solution and lock it. Apply sutures to fix the catheter and apply antiseptic solution over the insertion site. Carry out x-rays of the thorax to determine the proper positioning of the catheter tip which is at the junction of the cranial vena cava and right atrium. Dialysis delivery equipment and machinery. We have a dialysis delivery machine named Fresenius 4008S, which is an intermittent hemodialysis machine. Here we have a blood pump, which is used to take out blood from the patient's body through blood tubing. There are two tubings, blue and red, where blue is for bicarbonate solution or part B and red is for acidic solution or part A. Instead of reconstituting part B, we use bi-bag, which significantly reduces chances of any contamination. Other concentrated acidic solution or part A consists of sodium chloride, potassium chloride, calcium chloride, magnesium chloride, acetic acid, and glucose. Both part A and part B together form dialysate solution. During dialysis prescription, sodium can be adjusted based on the patient's sodium level and dialysate sodium concentration. Another important component of dialysis is blood tubing. This tubing comes in different sizes and selection is done on the basis of the patient's size and blood levels as anemia is a common finding in patients suffering from renal failure. When we open this package, we get two sets of tubes, one which has red ports and the other which has blue ports. Red signifies the arterial line, whereas blue signifies the venous line. In this arterial line, there's a portion with a large diameter, which is basically the blood pump part of the tubing. Likewise, in the venous line, there is a venous chamber, which fits the venous part of the dialysis machine. Always make sure to lock the clamps of blood tubing after opening the package. Also, there are arterial and venous pressure monitoring ports in both the arterial and the venous line. Another important component of dialysis is a dialyzer, which is also termed as an artificial kidney. Inside a dialyzer, which is approximately 30 centimeters long or about 12 inches, the blood flows through up to 20,000 hair fine fibers. Microscopic pores in the fibers filter out metabolic wastes and excess water, which the dialysis fluid then carries away. As the blood cleansing process proceeds, inside the dialyzer, a dialysis machine pumps the blood, administers anticoagulants, and monitors circulation. The dialyzers come in different sizes based on surface area and different membrane types. Dialyzers are selected based on the patient's size and the dialyzer's surface area. Also, dialyzers can be high flux or low flux. Dialyzer has four ports, two on one side and two on the other side. 
These ports are connected with blood tubing and couplers, which carry blood and dialysate solution respectively. First, turn on the machine and the machine will perform automatic tests. After that, enter the cleaning mode and perform rinsing, which usually takes about 16 minutes. In the meantime, blood tubing is fitted to the machine. First take the arterial line and attach the blood pump portion of the arterial line to the blood pump. After that, fix the arterial pressure port of the arterial line to the designated port of the machine. Now, place the dialyzer in the dialyzer holding clamp and connect the arterial port with the dialyzer. Likewise, take the venous line and fix the venous chamber in the designated port. A collection bag is also attached with the venous line in which the priming solution is collected during the process of priming. Connect the venous pressure port of the venous line to the designated port of the machine and connect the other end of the venous line to the other side of the dialyzer. Now connect the connector with one end of the arterial line and connect the other end of the connector with the IV line containing normal saline solution which is ideally used for priming. The main purpose of priming with normal saline solution is to remove all the trapped air within the blood tubing and the dialyzer. After rinsing, put the machine in the test mode during which the machine will automatically run self-diagnostics before dialysis initiation. After passing all the tests successfully, unlock all the clamps and start priming. During priming, normal saline solution passes through the blood tubing and the dialyzer removing all of the trapped air and finally collecting in the collection bag. Also, tap the dialyzer to remove all the trapped air during the process of priming. Approximately 2 to 300 milliliters of normal saline solution is utilized during priming. Once the desired priming volume is reached, stop the blood pump and connect both the arterial and venous line using the connector and circulate the priming solution for the next four to five minutes. Also, during this time, infuse the diluted heparin solution through the injection port in the arterial line. This heparin will circulate through the blood tubing and the dialyzer attaching with their surfaces and reduces chances of blood clotting within the circuit during dialysis. After recirculation of heparin for five minutes, stop the blood pump and connect the dialysate couplers with the dialyzer. Make sure to connect the red and blue coupler lines in opposite directions to the blood tubing. That is, the red blood tubing port will have a blue coupler and the blue blood tubing port will have a red coupler. This will allow countercurrent flow of blood and dialysate for effective clearance. After this, enter the dialysate menu and enter base sodium, which is the amount of total sodium present in part A and part B, which in our case is equivalent to 135 millimole per liter. In prescribed sodium, 
enter the level of sodium according to the patient's sodium level and confirm the changes. Now, enter the ultrafiltration menu and enter the ultrafiltration goal, which is generally the amount of fluid which is intended to be removed from the patient's body. In the first dialysis session, this value is usually kept at 100 ml and in subsequent sessions, it is adjusted based on the patient's weight gain between sessions or overhydration. Ultrafiltration time is the time for which the dialysis session is intended and based on the ultrafiltration goal and ultrafiltration time, ultrafiltration rate is automatically calculated by the machine. After this, confirm the changes. Before connecting the blood tubing to the patient, always check the blood flow through both the catheter ports for any resistance. If resistance is felt, flush the catheter with normal saline solution. After this, connect the arterial line with the arterial port of the catheter and unlock all of the clamps. Start the blood pump. Initially, the speed of the blood pump is kept at a low speed until the blood enters the dialyzer and passes through the venous chamber. Make sure to remove heparinized priming normal saline solution by discarding it. Once blood reaches the other end of the venous line, stop the blood pump and connect the venous line with the venous port of the catheter. Now start the blood pump and keep monitoring the vitals of the patient throughout the dialysis session using the multi-parameter monitor. Pump speed can be increased slowly depending on the patient's body weight and may vary from 2 ml per kg per minute to 10 ml per kg per minute. Flushing of the blood tubing with normal saline solution or heparin is performed intermittently to reduce the risk of blood clotting in the extracorporeal circuit. Make sure not to infuse heparin in the last one hour of dialysis as it may lead to increased bleeding risks if the catheter is intended to be removed. After completion of the session, take a post-dialysis blood sample and send it for arterial blood gas analysis, kidney function tests, and liver function tests to evaluate the efficacy of the dialysis session. Reinfuse the blood in the extracorporeal circuit by connecting the arterial port of the blood tubing with normal saline solution and running the pump. Once reinfusion is completed, remove the blood tubing from the catheter put the dialysis machine in hot disinfection mode. Keep the patient under close observation for the next one hour and in the meantime, infuse post-dialysis medication. Repeat the session depending on the patient's condition and the laboratory reports. Typically, we undertake three dialysis sessions on alternate days and after that, subsequent sessions are planned depending on the patient's health status and blood reports. There are numerous dialysis success stories from our dialysis unit, some of which are beautifully elaborated by pet parents themselves. I have come from Pythagoras. I was walking from 850 km from here. I was walking from 
और इसको वहाँ से फिर हम पंतनगर लेके आए पंतनगर यूनिवर्सिटी में वहाँ दिखाया बट वहाँ के डॉक्टरों ने कहा कि आप इसको बरेली लेके चले जाइए तो बरेली फिर हम इसको आई ले गए सर इसको बट मुझे बरेली वालों ने यहाँ डायलिसिस के लिए रिकमेंड किया और यहाँ पे आके जो है क्या कहते हैं गढ़वासु में तो यहाँ हम लेके आए हैं तब से इसका क्रिटीनाइन जो है चौदह के आसपास था बट अब काफ़ी कम हो गया है और सर अभी की इसने बिल्कुल तब से दो महीने से खाना बिल्कुल नहीं खा रहा था बट आज तो इसने खाना भी खाया बिस्किट भी खाए पानी भी पिया तो अब तो काफ़ी बेटर इसको महसूस हो रहा है और थोड़ा हल्का फुल्का जो है प्ले भी कर रहा है खेल भी रहा है ये बट यहाँ से सबका मैं धन्यवाद देना चाहता हूँ गढ़वासु का रीनल फेलियर इज क्वाइट कॉमन इन डॉग्स एंड कैट्स इन अवर ओ पी डी वी डेली गेट सिक्स टू सेवन केसेज ऑफ रीनल फेलियर आउट ऑफ विच टू टू थ्री केसेज आर पोटेंशियल कैंडिडेट्स फॉर डायलिसिस इफ मेडिसिनल थेरेपी डज नॉट वर्क लाइक फ्लूड थेरेपी डायूरेटिक्स एंड फॉस्फेट बाइंडर्स दैन वी अंडरटेक डायलिसिस एज अ लास्ट रिजॉर्ट एंड येस इट वर्कस इट रियली वर्कस वंडर्स To watch more educational videos on veterinary and animal sciences subscribe the channel and please touch the bell icon Guru Angad Dev Veterinary and Animal Sciences University Ludhiana on YouTube